Hey, thank you for being here. Cheers. Yeah, cheers, man. Thanks for having me. Cheers to the first guest in the podcast studio. So I appreciate that. Um, we've only known each other a little while because you guys have a studio print shop across the street, but you guys have quickly become some of our best friends in this area. Uh, yeah. Can you tell me what is Studio Print Shop? Sure. And if you don't mind, tell me how the idea started and where it came from and how you brought it to fruition. Yeah, so it's sort of crazy. So uh, I'm partners with Rodney Smith, which you know as well. That, um, and we've been friends. We met the first time we were probably eight or nine years old. Uh, and we've been friends all the way through school and everything. And we started a screen printing business. Um, we were probably 24, 26, somewhere in there. Didn't work out uh, sort of different uh, going different places in life, uh, easy yeah. way to say it, but stayed friends. Uh, and it came full circle. We sort of kicked it back up probably about four years ago. Uh, my wife and I, uh, bought the equipment and stuff. Uh, Rodney was actually going through a divorce, so it didn't work for him to join right then. Yeah. And then about two years ago, we, uh, we renamed or rebranded and, uh, moved over into the space we're in and, uh, studio became a reality. So we do, Screen printing, uh, graphics design, uh, direct-to-garment printing, embroidery. Uh, and we really want to work more with uh, the creative uh, side of Concord more so than, you know, just that everyday contract printing. So so that that's funny you say that. So when I first saw the place, we were in this studio. We first got the keys, working until like midnight, knocking out the floor, putting a new ceiling. And you guys had... When I leave the driveway, mm. it points right towards the studio print shop. Right. And you can put those lightning bolt neon signs in. I'm like, man, those are cool. Yeah. It reminded me of David Bowie. And I think the next day I saw it on Instagram and I messaged you and you said, stop on in. And we've kind of been friends ever since. But yeah, and it was sort of great, too, because uh, Rodney knew Josh. Yeah. Your, your partner from back when we skateboarded, uh, back when we were real young. So, uh, yeah, it, it felt right. It did. It, yeah. it, it's cool, too, because you said you and Rodney knew each other for a long time. Josh and I have known each other for, I mean, 20 years, maybe. Yeah. And it's funny when you do find that person who's like willing to take a chance on you and you walk up to them and you're like, got an idea. And it's almost like they don't even need to hear it. But I'm on board. Yeah. And that's how this place was born, too. So it's, it's kind of got a similar vibe. And I love how you guys support like all the creatives more than to your point it's not just commercial you guys are so supportive of all the local businesses all you, the art in your place is phenomenal which i want to talk yeah, about that too you. yeah um and even the you know the, the saying let's talk about that that saying you have up on the wall yeah, yeah sort of our vision well it, it sort of maps out that that people matter uh and and for us that's really the uh, the whole thing that we're trying to do is invest in people. So, so we believe in you said something about creative and it made me think about a conversation we had over in the shop a couple of weeks ago. So, so I actually believe everyone's creative. I think somehow in society, we, we took the word creative and put it on art. Mm. Right. And, and I think that we're all born creative and, and education or schooling or however you want to say it sort of tr starts trying to teach us that we've got to be alike, but we weren't created like we we're created uniquely and creative. Right. Whatever you believe, you know, I believe we were made by a creator. And it's funny we use that word. Right. Right. And that we were created in his image. So we're creators. And somehow in society, we've told ourselves if we're not in art or, or some type of artistic realm that we're not creative. But I think for people to run businesses really well, yeah. they have to be creative, mm -hmm. right? For, for anything they're doing, any kind of business, you have to be creative. And and I think that's what people have to get back in touch with is being creative again. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, creative, creativity comes in so many forms. Um, culinary arts, but also just any problem solving lends itself right. to creativity. I, I, and it can 100%. be in finance, it can be anything. Anything. Yeah, and you think about a kid... How many kids do you know that you would look at and say they're not creative? Right. They're all creative. Yep. Right. And they're creative until what happens to them, do you think? Uh, we teach them not to be. We, we get self-conscious too. Yeah, yep. yeah, they do. They absolutely do. But but I think that's something that's taught. Um, if you think about when you first start going to school, what happens? And and I, I, I didn't do well in school because I couldn't stand in line like everyone else. Mm -hmm. I didn't drink water out of the water fountain like everybody else. I couldn't sit at my desk like everybody else. And and what does that, you know, and, and I'm not knocking school to, to the 
nth degree, but they teach us to try to all of us be alike. Mm -hmm. We walk alike, we dress alike, and then society starts pushing that as well. Sure. We actually reward you being like everybody else, right? And you actually get in trouble when you're not like everybody Mm -hmm. else. And that's when I believe you start becoming insecure and self-conscious, when you can't meet that demand of being like everyone else. Yep. It's funny. There's one artist we have, a musician, and uh, my wife always says he can't help but be anything than what he is. Yeah, it's fantastic. And same, same way. There's no way he is going to fit into a square job. And I think there's some of us who who can straddle it um, and others who just can't. Yeah, I agreed. And, um, <clears throat> yeah. But, man, you guys, yeah, you guys are always supporting local. And I guess it's because you're from this area. You're from Concord. We are both of us born and raised. Yeah. So um, what you guys are always on doing on Instagram, the pink chair. Yeah. Where did the pink chair come from? Yeah, so that's an interesting story. So Casey Johnson, she's actually the lady who painted the the big Maryland that we have on the wall, which is a great story within itself. But It's also the artwork it, on your shirt. It is the artwork on the shirt, too. She helped us. Uh, we did an event for the Concord Free Clinic today, their Festival of Tables, and uh, she helped us do that. And we had her there with some of her art as well. Uh, but so the pink chairs actually started before we had, uh, Casey's art and it sort of all ties together. I've known Casey for several years now and, um, we wanted someone to help us sort of with our space and get the, the furniture and stuff laid out. We knew we were going to have a little seating area and stuff. And I said something to Casey about, uh, if she would help us with that. And she was like, yeah, for sure. And uh, she had painted the Maryland, uh, several months before she didn't know I was a huge Maryland fan. Uh, so when she painted it, I was went nuts about it. And went, That's phenomenal. And she came in and started designing the area and she sort of got Rodney and, and my, my vibe, mm-hmm. our vibe for, for who we are. And it was real funny because at first Rodney couldn't visualize the pink chairs, <laughs> right? Even once they came in before she got everything set up, he was like, man, this is, uh, this is not going to work. He's like, I'm going to paint them black. I would get texts like I'm painting them black. <laughs> But then Casey and I was talking, uh, actually before that even happened, before the furniture came in, and I was like, Casey, what, how would you feel if we put Marilyn in here? And she looked at me, and she was like, uh, because the Marilyn actual paintings, maybe 11 by 14, yeah. it's really small, and that wall is huge. And I'm like, you know, like a 10 by 10. And she's like looking at me. I'm like, we could get it scanned in and stuff. And uh, she said, 10 by 10. I'm like, yeah, like 10 foot by 10 foot. And she just like, her eyes got big, and uh, everything just came together. Um with the furniture and everything looking the way it did the pink chair was was her idea to put pink chairs in there and i was in there with rodney one day and i honestly was trying to get him comfortable with the pink chairs yeah <laughs> uh and i said man we're gonna start pink chair wednesday so cool and, and we're gonna try to promote as many people as we can and get in that chair and, and get them you know out on instagram and 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 just love on people man i think love is is one of the most important things that we lose yeah you know and again we we take it um I don't know if you want to call it, uh, we, we mess it up. We mess a lot of stuff up. Right? Sure do. Yeah. We yeah. overthink it. We, we overthink it. Yeah. But it, yeah, I think, you, you know, you have to love people to help them. So, I mean. Yeah. I, I, it's the, um, there's this idea, I think that's probably early on in the evolution of creatives in their, in their life cycle of, <clears throat> First of all, probably the first thing all of us have in common is the imposter syndrome. Mm. And I've even heard Casey talk about for that. For sure, for sure. But I do think the ones who are self-conscious because of the imposter syndrome, a lot of times feel like you have to get territorial, mm. overwork, and there's only so much work. And I think that's one thing I've learned is there's more than enough work for everyone, and there's so many ideas, there's so many ideas, and the more you get people involved, the more and the better the ideas become. Oh, and that's why I think this community idea of of helping each other is so important more than ever. It's not, it's not competition. We're all helping each other rise. No, for, for sure. And, and that's the the law of abundance, right? Yeah, there, there's that's a, right. There's enough out there for all of us. Uh, so, so my youngest daughter is doing a, a coffee shop right up the street as well. And uh, I heard a, uh, a podcast with um, the guy who was the marketing guy that helped Truett Cathy start Chick-fil-A. Mm-hmm. And he said, what made Truett Cathy so powerful is he believed in the, abundance he believed there was enough out there for everyone yeah. and, and that's how he went after everything and and he he didn't worry about competition he would help them yeah he, he was good right he knew what he was doing his goal was to make the best chicken sandwich and he knew the business was out there 
And we feel the same way. There's a, a screen printer that actually rents space in this area. Mm-hmm. Inca Print, I Inca think Print. her name. So, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, and, and we tell her all the time. We comment on her post and, and encourage her. She's fantastic. She's yep. doing great work. And you know what? There's enough for her and us both. Whatever she needs, we're going to help her. And to see how other people work, to me, is so eye-opening and so valuable. I, I think experience, among all things, is probably the, the, the biggest teacher. And experience with all kinds of people and different ways of working and to see how they think and how you think and how they two work together. It, it's really something. And well, that's really where great ideas come from. Yeah, for sure. But it's back to, and, and you've you've been in corporate, you know, too. It, it's back where teams always better than one, right? That, mm. and, and again, for me, it comes back to that we're all created uniquely and there's no two of us alike. So when you get two, three, four, five, six, seven in a room and they're all bringing a little different quality, right? Then your idea just gets, like you're saying, yeah. stronger and stronger and stronger. But everybody's got to be able to be aware enough to check their ego, Yep. leave their ego at the door, come in, and Brene Brown says it, well, be ready to rumble, right? Yeah. And and come with open hearts and, and come out with the best idea you can. Yeah. We just got done with a production uh, for Orange County, a company out there, and small team, four people. It was great. So great. Client was very happy. And um, part of what made it so great is when you trust the people you work with. And I, I always say it's kind of a dumb saying, but I only want to work with people I want to work with. But this is why. And the four people were so open and trusted each other that if someone had a, an idea on the writing, the writer didn't get heard about it. Mm-hmm. It was always the best idea wins. And when you can check your ego, you let the best idea win. Yeah, for sure. It's e- great. E- ego is... Uh yeah, scary thing, right? But when you can get a team that, that can check it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you've read, I know we, we talked, we've read a lot of books too, but um, Extreme Ownership, Jocko. Jocko. Yeah. yeah. And and that's what makes SEALs so powerful, right? Is they can check their egos. They're a team. They check their egos and they go in together. Yep. And that's, it's powerful. And it's trust. It's absolute trust. Yep. It's absolute trust. Okay. So we're going to wrap this up in a minute, but I want to ask you two questions. Sure from two different points of view. Okay. Because you're both a creative, but you're also an entrepreneur. And I think the two tend to be very much intertwined, but both are also terrifying. So what what would your biggest tip be for people who want to start a business, but haven't as an entrepreneur? Yeah, so, um, and it's funny you ask that because it, it's something that uh, I, I have the, pleasure, I guess is the easy way to say it, to coach some people. And it, it's the same thing I, I say to them all the time is that dream or that um, feeling or whatever you have inside of you that's driving you to be an entrepreneur is there for a reason. Mm-hmm. It's there on purpose. It's not a mistake. It's not by chance. It's on purpose. And, and you have to believe enough in that and trust enough in that that's there on purpose to step out and go do it. Because the, the the fear is crippling, but our yeah. brains are set up to protect us. And a lot of times they try to protect us from stuff that they don't need to protect us from. And you got to have enough self-talk and enough self-awareness to realize that the reason it scares you is because it's new and it's challenging you. And that, that one of the t-shirts we printed, Comfort Won't You Dead, yeah. you know, you got to put yourself in uncomfortable situations to grow. And what I would tell people is find you some good mentors, yeah. uh, the people who are going to encourage you and help you. And ask them to mentor you because they're not a mentor until you ask. And and then face your fear and go. Uh, and successful people are going to help you. People help them. No, nobody, none of us got to where we're at alone. Right. right? So, But you have to go out and ask. You have to talk about your dreams. And there's going to be people who help you. And then you have to believe. Ted Lasso, I mean, you have to, yeah, that's right. you have to get after it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So then as a creative, what is one thing for a budding creative – what is one thing you think they should do every day? Yeah, so so I think they have to get up every day and and tell themselves, which I still do. To, to it's just the beginning. No, no matter where they're at in the process, I, I tell Rodney over and over, we're just getting started. Mm-hmm. Buckle up. Every day's every day's uh, you're never going to arrive. It's it's a journey, and there's so many people who are. Um, spending their life or planning their life thinking that they're going to arrive at some point and and there's nothing to arrive to it's the journey is the arrival it's the purpose it's so it's 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 to me it's exactly the same thing there's no difference it's it's get up every day 
and chase what's inside of you yeah. like tomorrow's not coming what's the goggins uh uh the navy seal guy yeah Dave, I, david Dave, goggins david goggins yep. yeah so oh sorry so he has a quote um and it and it really it it's it's for me it's what i think about whenever um, I think about everything that's inside of me that that is there on purpose that I want to try to accomplish before I die. And he said that he was 300 and something pounds. Yeah, that's right. Uh, He's an ex- exterminator. exterminator. Yeah. yeah. And said that he woke up one day or somebody said something to him about he was going to get to heaven and God's going to hold up a picture. And it's a picture of what he is now. Mm-hmm. And that he was going to look at God and say, that's not me. And God said, no, no, no. That's what I made you to be. Mm-hmm. And because you've been scared and lazy and everything else your entire life, you are what you are now. And he ended up being a Navy SEAL, a Green Beret. He's a motivational Ranger. talk, a Ranger maybe. He's yep. a motivational talker now because yep. he did Ultra athlete, yeah. marathon athlete. He didn't accept what he was. The older I get, older by the day, I'm starting to think that the things that we used to say were hard aren't necessarily hard. And then I heard somebody mention the other day that when cigarette companies actually helped spread the, the, the whether you want to call it myth fact, whatever it is, that quitting cigarettes is hard because it kept people smoking longer because it made it acceptable for failure. And it's it was the same thing in boxing. When I used to box, people the night of a fight would start making, oh, my hand hurts. I don't feel good. Or I've been sick for two days. And they you can generate your own failure to make it acceptable, right? <clears throat> For sure. And I think whether it's entrepreneurism, creativity, you know, why not you? Why not? What, why, why can't you have a successful business? Why can't you do that cool campaign? Absolutely. Why is your idea not good enough? And I think it's because we, it's the fear. You don't want to put yourself out there. But if you don't put yourself out there, you're never going to test that idea and get ideas better and better. And it's, it's not hard. It's just a little bit scary. No, it, it's, it's a lot scary. Uh, and, and, you know, and my daughter was reminding me of this yesterday because we've talked about it a lot as well. So what I tell people all the time, you're, you're narrating your story. We were talking about Matthew McConaughey's book too, yeah. but so, so you have a choice, you're Picasso or whoever, and, and you're narrating or, or painting your life. You can either paint your life of I can't mm-hmm. or you can paint your life of I can. And it's the difference of getting up every morning and telling yourself, I'm going to make this happen and I'm going to yeah. do whatever it takes to make it happen. Or you get up in the morning and you say, you know what, whatever. I'm, I'm from a divorced uh, parents. I grew up in a, a single wide trailer. I, I didn't finish college. I, you know, I can give you every reason in the world right. why I can't. But now give me the reasons why I can. Right. Right. And and that's that's really the mindset is what are you telling yourself? And if you tell yourself that it, I think it I don't know who quoted it, but if you if you think you can't or think you can, you're probably right. Right. It's correct. Right. It's correct. That's right. Yeah. That's right. N- Nelson Mandela's quote was um, I've never lost. I've either won or learned. Yeah, right. Same same kind of idea. Right. Spin that's, it. That's a great one. I haven't yeah. heard that one. That's a great one. Even when we started this uh, this studio, my friend Chris Wire, he has a really cool studio up in Dayton. Very cool. Um, very experiential things. They, uh, it's amazing. Their stuff is amazing. They have a video game of Tesla versus Edison. Oh, nice. And it's like Mortal Kombat yeah, that they yeah. made. Nice. And when you hit the other person, it zaps your hand. <laughs> and it's called War, uh, War of the Currents. Anyways, fascinating people. Um, but he's become a great friend over the years. And he, and he said, when, you, when I started this with Josh... He said, you just have to will it into existence. And I. It's powerful. It, it's true. Like it you just true. have to keep on it. And if every loss is a reason to quit, all of us would have quit a long time ago. Yeah. As long as you continue to have that, that drive and that feeling inside you that this is where you're supposed to be, you can't give up. Yeah. Winston Churchill, never, never, never give up. Yeah. I mean, never. Right. Yeah. And, and, and people, when it gets hard, uh, there's been some stuff, social media memes uh, where really successful people have talked about how they've seen so many people give up right before mm-hmm. crossing the line. Yeah, because it got hard, and hard is when we're learning. It, yeah, we have to embrace and learn. I tell people all the time. I actually love the grind. Mm-hmm. I love it. I, I love the challenge. I love waking up and ha- I love waking up at three o'clock in the morning with anxiety, because I'm like, man, this is great because this is where I'm supposed to be. 
this is where I'm learning. I, I'm my attention is amazing when I'm like this, right? Yeah, right. So it's true. So, you are. You're so focused. Yeah, and I've learned instead of saying, "Well, I used to do lay in bed and say I can't go to sleep. I can. I have to get up in the morning. I don't care. I'll get up at three o'clock. Get up at two thirty, and I'll stay up all day. I'll sleep when it's time. Yeah. But instead of worrying about that, I get up and do stuff that's going to help propel what we're trying to do. Yeah. And laying in bed doesn't do you any good. I mean, you just worry and it gets worse. There's no rest, right? You're better off just getting up and going at it. Totally agree. Yeah. Man, thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, that's great, Uh, great, man. um, Hey, really quick, uh, give everyone the website and where to find you on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, uh, www.studioprintshop.com and it's uh, Studio Print Shop. On, on Instagram as well. It's super cool. Uh, you guys have one of the best Instagrams around here. And like I said, oh, you're always, you. you are all, you, you tagged my wife's personal uh, training business the other day. You yeah, guys are yeah. always, thank you. Thank you from the, from the community for you. You guys always doing that. You're yeah. always connecting dots for people and opening doors thank for people. You. And if there's anything we can do for you guys, you know, let us know, man. And this is great. We're glad you got this. And, and we have some people that want to do podcasts too. So it's going to be good. Come on in. Yeah. We got to get Rodney and we got to get the whole crew in here next yeah, time. It'd be and great. Josh and Rodney and Casey and get, just fill the whole place up. It so, would be great, man. Thank you cool. for having me. Yeah, man. Honored. Thank you. Yep. Take it easy.